Hello everyone, it's Andy here from Andy's Fishing. I'm trying to catch my dinner today. It's uh, quite a special spot. It's um, one of those rivers that's uh, really clear. So I might go out the front, I might stay in the river, I'm not sure yet. But I've got my spear. And I'm going to try and uh, spear either a shark or a stingray. Then cook it up. I've had a, a lot of people request to do stingray asam pedas. Asam pedas, I think. Ikam pari asam pedas. Hopefully I've said that right, that's uh, Indonesian for hot sour stingray. <laughs> oh, well, I, don't, I really don't know Indonesian, but uh, yeah, let's go see what we can find. I've been to this area quite a few times and whenever I come here there's lots and lots of stingrays. Uh, later on I'll tell you what the laws and that are about spearing and, and size of stingrays and all that. <laughs> Andy's fishing. So we can see here on the bottom, there's a lot of uh, yabby holes. Um, but I don't see any stingray holes. I'll, I'll hopefully show you a stingray hole later on. But this doesn't look like the best spot to go go hunting for, for stingrays. So we'll get the spear ready. So yeah, just put it together basically. Um, and then we'll, we'll go and have a look somewhere else. This, um, yeah, I was hoping this would be a good spot, but because it's nice and calm, there's no wind. But it looks like there's no stingrays here. There's a, a very small fish here. So it is quite windy, and this is what I was talking about. This here is where a stingray has pumped for yabbies. They've pumped for yabbies here, and they've pumped for yabbies here. So we're in a good area. Hopefully you can hear me, but um, you see all this stuff in here? That means the hole's been there a while, and the yabbies have moved back in. I was hoping to spear one in the shallows here, like amongst these mangroves, because this is where I've seen them. I'll um, put a bit of video up here. There's, there's usually heaps in here. And it's really quite easy, but the sun's a bit low and the tide's really low. So, um, yeah, there's, uh, I don't think there's going to be too many around here. If you have a look, like I'm not actually wearing shoes, but it's only about three inches deep. So we'll have to head out definitely a bit further. I think it's a, oh, I don't know, it might be a leopard ray or something. Let's see if we can get him. Oh, he's, oh no, it's a cow tail ray. Oh, he's seen us. He's seen us. Ah, he's gone. No, nah, he's gone. Now, each time you shoot the spear into the sand, the, uh, the prongs, they spread out, so you've got to push them in every now and then. Otherwise, they end up like out here somewhere and they won't be any good. Now, here we've got two stingrays. Let's see which one we want. They're about the right size. Let's see if we can get one. Ah, oh, missed. So what's happened here is my um, my bungee cord has, has has come out of the end. So we're just going to not use the bungee cord, and we'll just use the um, just use. I've got a lanyard here. Tie that onto there, and just just throw it. We won't use the rubber to, to boing, spring along. See one there. Let's see if we can sneak up on him. Oh, over the top of him. Oh, get another shot. Get another shot. Come on. Got him. Yes. We've got him. We have a stingray. Woo. Yeah, that, just because you missed him the first go, doesn't mean you shouldn't have another second throw. And look at that, that shot is perfect. Right in the top of the body. We'll get him to shore. These, these guys here, this species, the cowtail ray, they've got one of the longest spines of any stingray, so you've got to really watch them. So I don't want to deal with him out here. I'll get him into shore so first. While I'm walking back to the beach, I'll give you a few tips on um, getting into spearing. Obviously, one, don't kill all the stingrays. I mean, um, you're allowed one per person under 1.5 meters in Australia, in Queensland. Um, but yeah, don't don't kill too many of these. They're pretty easy to hunt. Um, the tr the trick that I use is whenever I go spearing, I aim for some leaves, little sticks, bit of weed, and just get my eye in before I start. So that's that's a really good trick. And then the other one I think I mentioned already is is pushing those barbs together. Once you've hit the sand once or twice, you've got to um, yeah push the the prongs back in. And, um, depending on where you are, I'd probably suggest wearing wearing shoes. 
I know this area pretty well and there's there's actually nothing here that really gets me unless I happen to stand on one of these little buggers. This is going to be an interesting recipe. It's going to be, um, yeah, hot and sour stingray or Assam Peras Ikan Pari. Hopefully I've said that <laughs> the right way. Then we'll process him and cook him up for dinner. So I've just grabbed a, a nice sturdy stick and all you can see is still quite lively. What we're going to do is make sure the spear's in him, grab hold of his tail, hopefully nice and solid, and then, i said this before, but these spines are actually designed to come out, so we just push down and let it, let it break off. There we go, that's it, that's the spine gone. There we go. Now this is actually quite a small one because it's only a small stingray, but um, yeah, they get much bigger than that, like, you know, up to about that long. So some of you didn't like this last time, so I'm going to cut it out. But basically I'm going to slit his throat. So I'm not going to show you. I've actually um, just discovered a new way of killing these guys. If you push further down, you end up in their brain cavity. So here's, a, here's another tip. If you try and kill them from this side, that is extremely hard. Oh, you, can't, you can't kill them by putting, putting anything through there. So you turn them over and cut all the way in until you reach the top of their skull and that's yeah he's dead he's dead all right now next thing is we're going to clean him um, they have a lot of slime on them as, as you can see from this, this this black stuff on my fingers that's on his tail but they also have a, a lot of slime on their skin so we'll um, I'll show you how to do that now to clean this guy he's, he's got sand stuck all over him he's got that slime we grab a handful of sand and we just rub Rub that all over him and just keep keep rubbing. And then after a while, see that? It's all nice meat. He's still got the skin on obviously. But we just keep rubbing off the slime until there's none left. So basically what we're doing is just sandpapering the skin of the fish. There we go. And that's pretty much done. There we go. Nice. Now, I'm not going to waste any of this guy. I'm going to take off the flaps for the meat. And then hopefully tomorrow or the next day, Andrew and I want to go fishing for some mud crabs. So we use the, um, the, the head and the, the stomach area and the tail for, for crab bait. So and you just you feel around where you need to cut. And it's about here somewhere. Just be careful with that. There we go. And that's why I um I cleaned him before I, I cut these off. I didn't want to get too much sand on the good good meaty parts. So this time I'm not wasting any of the meat parts. I'll um, see if I can show you this. So you've got the bottom skin, you've got a muscle layer. Then you've got a layer of cartilage, that, that, that light line in there. And then you've got another two layers, there's two layers of, of muscle there, but um, yeah, so you can eat pretty much all of that, even even the skin. So that's why we, uh, we cleaned it nicely. And we've got two of those beautiful stingray fillets or flaps. And there's no shortage of these guys, there's um, yeah, plenty around. And like I said, we'll use that for crab pot bait in the next couple of days. Hopefully we'll turn that into some nice mud crab. So you're probably wondering how I'm going to cook this stingray up. Uh, here's something I prepared earlier. Uh, so what I've done is I've carried in my bag of ingredients and a few things and a nice wok. So let's go and start a fire. Oh. And uh, yeah, this is going to be interesting. I've never done this recipe before, like many of my recipes, but I'm going to put my own spin on it. Nice beautiful little area. I just find a spot out of the wind. Plenty of wood here, so this actually yeah. looks like a perfect spot for a fire. I can sit up a little bit higher and make a little divot in the ground. There we go. Always like to make a, a safe fire fireplace, although there's nothing here that can get catch on fire, although be sheltered from the wind. And there we have our, our fire pit. Oh look at that. Here's some kindling straight away. 
Don't have to look very far. Look at that. Easy as. There we go. And we'll just um, get some more wood on there and let that burn down to a, a coal. Nice coal. Ooh, that's getting rather warm on my private parts. Ah. All right, let's get out of here. Like much of my cooking, it's pretty basic, but it should be really tasty. And I'm going to substitute a few things um, for, for normal ingredients that, that you would use in a, in a proper recipe. But this is cooking Andy style. Cooking Stingray Andy style on the beach. This is, this is still a beach. It's, it's just behind the beach. Beach is just over there, but nice little water here. So what I've got is some um, coriander out of my garden. I um, can't remember the spice you were supposed to use instead of coriander. Now... So I've forgotten my little bowls and I didn't want to carry too much weight. So I've got my um, drifter shopping bag and these are a good thing now. You can use these things probably for years. They're, they're made out of really sturdy material and it's good because the shopping bags in, in shopping centers now cost dollars. So do something good for the environment and save yourself you know, a couple of dollars, maybe 10, 20, 30 dollars a year. So I'm just going to turn him over and um, yeah, just put my chopped ingredients on there. We'll do some uh, ginger. Just do it in chunks like so. I never used to like ginger, but in some cooking, well, it just adds that nice, fresh, bit of a kick as well. It's, it can be a little bit warm. Uh, let's see. Then we've got some lemongrass. This, this came out of my garden as well. We might uh, chop that in half and then cut down the middle. Then we've got some beans. Um, I was supposed to get okra, but... Living in a small town, um, supermarket doesn't have okra, so, and it's actually not the season for okra here. I, I usually grow some okra, but uh, we use, let's see, it says, I think, 10 to 15 okra. That's, yeah, about 10 to 15 okra. And we'll just cut the uh, the ends off those. Nothing too fancy. All, all the pieces for this are actually quite big, so you can, you can pick them out, play with them, eat them at your leisure. There we go, thirds. And again, like, just, just notice how quickly it is to cook delicious food in the wild in just beautiful settings. So then we've got our stingray. Now he's beautifully washed. We, we don't want to have one big chunk like that. So what we'll do is we'll just cut him into pieces. Just had a look around all the stuff that's, that's washed up on the shore here and there was this nice little food container. So. Nature provides in, in many odd ways. So I'm just going to put my cut up stingray in there. There we go. We'll do the other other side as well, but that's that's cool. If you ask, you shall receive. There you go. All the stingray chopped up, ready to be used. We may as well chop the tomatoes now. Just big, big chunks. This is actually very big tomato, so I'm I'm going to do them in eighths, just like so. Just two tomatoes. There we go. And I think if I knock that down, that fire will be ready to cook on. So that's pretty much everything done. Just uh, start cooking. All right, we get our wok under the heat. Whack some nice rice bran oil in there straight away. Good. Uh, six or seven tablespoons of that. And then what I'm using is tom yum paste. I, uh, I read a recipe about um, how to do this properly and they didn't have the right paste. But what I did, I, I looked at the ingredients and they were pretty pretty similar. So it, it should be fine, should, should taste pretty nice. Oh, that's a big one. We'll put three, no, yeah. Well, two, two big, two big table, teaspoons in there. That's a lot of flavor. And uh, just move that around, get it, um, <laughs> Whenever you use paste like this, you want to get into the oil and make it fragrant, which means like all the all the uh, the flavors, all the aromas, they uh, they get released from the paste. Oh yeah, mmm, that smells pretty good already. So we've let that go for a few minutes, and I want to put the stingray in nice and early because I want that cooked. There we go. <coughs> oh yeah, mmm. Get those spices into me. Very nice. 
Now we don't want to let that go too long because otherwise the, um, the, the paste will burn. So I've got some water here. We'll put some water in that right away. About, about two cups worth. Nice bit of water. And then whenever I'm cooking, I always think about what ingredients go in what order. So the lemongrass will take a little while to get the flavours out. So that goes in now. And same with the ginger. I want, want a nice rounded ginger flavour. So we'll, we'll throw that in as well. There we go. Let that, let that go simmer for, for, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes. So while that's simmering away, it's, it's just nice to uh, enjoy the afternoon sun. The, the tide's slowly going out by the look of it. And uh, yeah, it's just nice to be in a, in a wild place cooking delicious food. Uh, that, that meat's probably half cooked. It's time to put the beans in, which actually should be okra, but that's all right. I almost forgot. One of the, the key ingredients is tamarind paste, but I couldn't get tamarind paste, again, because I live in a small town, but rice wine vinegar. Put in, let's see, ah, a good, good quarter cup splash in there. And then some brown sugar. I had this at home, but um, yeah, there we go. Mmm. Now we'll throw in our tomatoes now. There we go. So yeah, I, I don't mind my tomatoes not not cooked so well, um, but if you want them really soft, just put them in earlier. That's um, that's that's all part of cooking. It's uh, you cook how you want the food to be. I'll just get that back up to heat. And I uh, think, let's see, let's put some uh, coriander in there now. There we go, coriander, last bean. Now, let's see, another five minutes, and that should be ready to eat. And uh, we're just going to beat the sun. <laughs> oh, how nice is this? So guys, uh, I think after this, um, I'm going to go out with Andrew. What, what I mean after this is the next episode. Uh, Andrew, a friend of mine, you've seen him in plenty of videos, he wants to catch a nice legal barramundi. And I've, I've, I've caught plenty of barramundi, but what I might try and do is catch a shark. So we'll be barramundi fishing with a shark line. So we'll see how that goes. That, that hopefully is the next episode. Uh, never know, never 100% never sure. Um, the reason I didn't have a video this week, or last week, is because the weather's been so terrible. It, it's been raining, it's been windy, and you wouldn't know, look at that. It is clear as, it is just such a beautiful afternoon. Yeah, I think that's ready. It's actually, oh, better get that off before I, before I try it. Just look at that. How delicious does that look? Mmm, ooh, plenty of chili in there. So the sun's about to go down. There's, um, here's little fish, fish just in the shallows over here. But uh, let's try some of this, this stingray just um, just on its own. You can eat the skin, the meat, but the cartilage in the middle, that's uh, basically the bone of the stingray. It's the same same um, skeleton that the sharks have. Uh, you, 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 I mean, you could eat it, but I think it's going to be a bit hard to digest and, and chew. But uh, yeah, it's looking forward to this. Look at that. Oh, yummy. Mmm, let's try this. Mmm. Mm. It um it falls apart in your mouth. It's so soft. Mmm. <clears throat> There's not too much spice in there. I think I did the good thing with um the two big two big dollops of the um, Tom Yum paste. There's a slight warmness, but um if, if you don't like spicy food, um this this is actually quite good, I think. Mmm. Mm, you can see the um, the membrane there. So I'm, I'm not going to try and eat. I might have a chew of it. Mm, mm. You can can actually break it into pieces, but then it's really quite hard. So you can split down this, each section, but mm, very fibrous. Mm. Yep, I'm uh, definitely not going to eat that. It's um, that would get really stuck in your throat like a fish bone, so um, yeah, definitely don't eat that bit. But uh, yeah, the skin, top skin, bottom skin, mmm. Mm. I can't, can't emphasize enough how that just falls off. Maybe I can show you. Hang on, have a look at this. You can just scrape it off with the side of the fork. 
It's uh, yeah, so it's it's actually very delicate, and um, I think I think in Indonesia this is actually a delicacy. Um, Thailand, Indonesia. Mmm, and I'm not surprised why. Oh look at that, the sun's just about to go right down. Mmm. Oh wow, I think I've got the flavours right in this this recipe here. Mmm. Mm, let's try. I mean, we don't need to try anything else. Everything else is going to be just as nice. Tastes like the the sauce, mm, the beans. I think the okra would be a nice touch because it adds a um, a nice sliminess, a nice texture. Oh, that's hot. Mmm. Mmm. But yeah, very nice. You can just taste that lemongrass. So now that I've cooked with it, um, I'm not going to eat it. Mmm, but um, yeah, just take them out, and now uh, you can pretty much eat, well, everything else in there you can eat, just, um, the only thing you don't eat is the lemongrass, oh, there's another piece, yep, the lemongrass, and then the, um, the cartilage on the, uh, on the fish flaps there, oh, little birds are going, going crazy, it's that time of day where, where little birds love to, mmm, sing, fly around, Mm. Right down, this is the, the flap. I think I can probably chew that bit. No, no, it's actually hard. So I've just got to suck all the, the good bits off the outside. Mm. Mm. But that bit there, there you go, that's different. So the top bit here, that was all meaty. And this bit was more like jelly, really nice. So that was the um, the outside of the, the flap. Mm. Mm. That is a really nice texture. Look at that, yum yum. Oh, and the first time I cooked one of these, uh, it wasn't actually on camera, but I didn't, I thought, oh, the skin, it's gonna taste like shark. And it tastes nothing like shark. It's more like um, cross between squid, scallops, and fish. Um, but like I said, just don't, don't, um, don't kill too many of these guys. Um, they reproduce really slowly like sharks. In Australia, I don't think there's any species that's uh, threatened. Mmm. Mmm, yum yum. Oh wow. Oh, it's so peaceful out here. And everyone, I really appreciate your comments. At the moment, I'm still replying to all of them. Uh, I don't know how long I can, I can keep that up for. Hopefully I can do it for a bit longer. But if I can't keep up, what I'm going to do is start like a, um, I don't know if you want to call it a club or a membership or just a bunch of people on my website that um, chat to me on a regular basis. Um, obviously not everybody writes a comment, not everyone wants to, that's, that's fine, not, not a problem. Um, but I like your feedback as well. So, unless people tell me what they like, what they don't like, what they want more of, what they want less of, I just don't know. So, um, one, one other thing I have been doing is putting questions up through YouTube. Yeah, so a whole bunch of you get on there, so I really appreciate that as well. Mm, so, all I can do is make the videos that you asked me to do and that you like. So, so yeah, uh, which is what I'm doing stingray catch and cook <laughs> you guys have, have asked for this um, and a lot of people from Indonesia Thailand Malaysia they specifically asked for Assam pedas Assam pedas is that, did I say it right um, hot and spicy and uh, yeah I can feel my mouth mouth getting warm mm. but it is really delicious it's a, it's a really interesting meal, this. You've got that, that little, see if you can zoom right in there, those little nodules on the, on the top there. They're like a little crunchy thing. Then you've got the really soft meat, and then down the bottom, the, um, the end of the, the stingray flap is his little outermost fingers type thing. It's really gelatinous. Mmm, so nice. Mmm. Now quite a lot of you have asked me to show you more of the eating, <laughs> which is why I'm eating more. 
on camera. Normally I just sort of end the video here. But um, yeah, let me know if you like me eating on camera, if you don't like me eating on camera. Um, yeah, I just do that. Mm. And there's that, um, that cartilage. It's um, really hard. You can bite through it. But it's, what's it like? It's um, not as hard as a, a raw noodle. I mean, you can eat it. I just ate a bit. But, uh, yeah, if, you, if you're really in, in Struggle Street, just eat the whole thing. <laughs> There's actually not much on an animal that you can't eat. A lot of people get upset about um, poo trails and things like that. But if you're a fish in the ocean and you eat another fish, you're eating the poo trail. You're eating everything. You're eating its teeth, its eyeballs, its brain. You name it. Mmm... I've got so many recipes. It's um, it's just oh, look at the weather. Look at look at the weather. It is so nice. <sighs> the last week and a half, it was just drizzly, blowing 20 knots. I actually get quite depressed when it's like that. So hopefully, when I'm making these videos, I encourage you to go out when it's good. Um, I was actually talking to the local um, local tackle shop owner Grant and Bob. Um, about how their business is going and when the weather's terrible no one's buying which makes sense but my theory is if you get your fishing gear while if you get your fishing gear ready while it's bad weather then as soon as it's good you're ready to go there's the last tip for the day <laughs> secret secret that's that's what i do like I, I get all my stuff ready when it's bad and then when it's good drop of a hat bang i'm gone a lot of people ask me to go fishing with them it's like i don't know when i'm going fishing i'm going fishing when the weather's good, and that's what I'm going, bang, right now. So, do some prep, and you'll be ready for adventures like this. Catch you next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified of my new videos. I do them every week. If you want to see more right now, click the, uh, the links above. Catch you next time.